After splitting the first two games of the series in Kimberley, the 100 Mile House Wranglers would string together three straight wins on home ice to claim their first KIJHL championship in only their third season. For the Dynamiters, it was a result that was tough to swallow. The run we had, to think that we could almost do it what we did the year before again this year, to have it all just cut short like that was kind of just an empty feeling. There was a lot of tears, a lot of disappointment, but there was, uh, from my perspective, it should have been a lot more celebration because it was two pretty incredible years. There's going to be five or six banners hanging in this rink that is part of their legacy. With the Wranglers' aggressive style, the Dynamiters saw plenty of time on the power play. However, they struggled to get anything going against series MVP Zane Steves and would finish just four for 27 with the man advantage. We had lots of zone time. We had no trouble gaining the zone. Uh, we just had trouble getting the puck by him and uh, just like Tyson was for us last year and the majority of this year, your goalie has to be your best penalty killer and uh, he certainly was. As the playoffs went along, the injuries would pile up for the Dynamiters who would limp their way through a physical battle with the Wranglers. If people would have known what Jason Richter was going through and it, it, probably since the end of October, November, uh, he's been playing with a dislocated rib and there's a nerve that runs through there that just makes every time you get hit, uh, you're in excruciating pain. It's pretty painful, obviously, but uh, I, I didn't think I had any problem playing through it. I mean, I was going to play through anything uh, during playoffs and for this group of guys. The 2-1 defeat in Game 5 would mark the end of an era for this group, with what could be as many as nine players either graduating from the league, accepting college hockey scholarships, or moving up to Junior A. It's been a great five years for this club, and... Uh... I just couldn't thank them enough for letting me play here for this long. It's really sad that it's coming to an end, but uh, I'm excited to start new things. I'm excited to go down to school. I'm excited to get on with my life a little bit. For Tyson Brower, Jason Richter, Eric Buckley, and Justin Meyer, the more things change, the more they stay the same, as all four will be teammates next fall for the University of Jamestown Jimmies in North Dakota. I can't wait to go down there with those guys. Uh, it's going to be tons of fun. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to focus on school, but uh, playing hockey is definitely going to be the best part. We're all excited, and we're going to bring a winning tradition down there and uh, hopefully instill a lot of the things that we did um, in Kimberley. It's also the end of an era for head coach Jerry Banks, who's resigning after three very successful years behind the bench, and this is second stint with the team. It was my last game uh, with that group. Uh, and that's why I wanted it to be a celebration. It was a very sad night for me. He's had a huge impact on my life, never mind just uh, just hockey. He's uh, one of the best mentors I've ever had. Rarely in hockey you uh, build a relationship with a coach on a, a friend level, but you know, he's a very good friend of mine. Um, you know, I look up to him and uh, you know, he's like family to me. Now as the team looks to reload for next season, Banks feels the recent success will definitely help. If I'm a player looking and, and you see that we've got six kids heading on to college and a couple probably off to play Junior A next year, that this is a good place to come and develop. For Go in Kimberley, I'm James Farnan.